ripping off a lot, dig the footer, build the house, the roof, and everything in it. And so, four o'clock every morning, my daddy took those lousy, runny grits, put me out there, you want to be a man? Here you go. I will go out there all day. Lord knows I was very tired. Brother Payne would say, son, don't drink no water because the monkey will get you. You know, big head, hard head of this red junior one, what's the monkey? And so I learned, I was drinking my water. That day I went up on this roof. I got so dizzy, I didn't know what to do. I started calling on the name of Jesus. I learned my lesson, but I tell you one thing, I stopped complaining about working in the tent office in the summer. I stopped complaining about babysitting. And I stopped complaining about piano lessons. I said, I'm going back to school. That's right. Now, my daddy always had a lesson. And, and, and the takeaway today I want you to get is that he was a man of faith and he was a man of prayer. I can remember, just like yesterday, that a sister called him to pick her up from the bus station. Late at night, and God knows we didn't have any money, the gas needle was almost on you. In fact, I think it was there. And he said, sis, I'll be right there. And my daddy got up, went and picked her up, and you know, it wasn't someone that lived in the city. She lived way out there. So my daddy started praying as he tells the story that the Lord has this car. He will get us and he will bring us back. So he got the sister home and she said, Elder, here's a little bit of something for you for gas. No, sis, this is my job because you must understand Elder Parker believed in what is called servant leadership. He was your servant. You are not his servant. And so she insisted that you take it, Elder, and he took it. And when he got to the light, he opened his hand because he thought perhaps it's probably a couple of bucks. It was a hundred dollar bill. Mm. He said, the Lord is good. And his person <laughs> is doing <it> forever. <laughs> My dad, Loved South Atlantic Conference. Mm -hmm. He loved all of you. He wanted nothing but the best for That's you. Right. He was a peace loving man. He didn't like dissension right. because he figured that if you are called by God, you should be used by God. That's right. And so, therefore, he helped a lot of people. It was brought to my attention that not only did he help the ordained and the men who had gone to Oakwood and Andrews, but he helped lay preachers as well. And there is one person, Pastor Gordon. When Pastor Gordon, nine years ago, said that he, after his retirement from teaching public school, my daddy gave him this robe and a book of sermons mm. because he wanted to help him be successful in winning souls for Christ. And I know my time is just about up. <laughs> and I know Luther over there and my brother is going to tell me to shut up. But I think I will not tell another story. I have a lot of them. Tell you I have a lot of them. I can remember when the couples were there. At the end of the month, y'all guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. At the end of the month, the couples were there waiting on that check. <laughs> the barrel, the food was low. And I can remember us praying. And I can also rem remember going out on the porch and there were so many bags of groceries out there I couldn't even count them all. That is what I saw. And the takeaway is prayer, faith, and trusting in God. And I will leave you with this. Alpha, you did not steal my thunder because turn your eyes upon Jesus. 
look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. earth and heaven shall pass away it's not a dream God will make all things new that day gone is the curse from which I stumbled and fell Evil is banished to eternal hell. No more night, no more pain, no more tears, never cry again and praises to the great I am we will live in the light of the risen All around, all the nations bow down to see the only sound are the praises to Christ our King. Slowly the names of the book are read. No need to fear, there's nothing to dread. No more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again but praises to the great I am we will live in the light of the risen Lamb see over there there's a mansion prepared just for me where I will live with my Savior eternally no no more night no more pain no more tears never crying again but praises to the great I am we will live in the light of the risen and oh, oh praises to the great I am, we will live in the 
light of the reason light. The reason not an altar call. I neglected to do something. At this time, for a quick minute, I would like for my younger brother, Walter, and his lovely wife, Dr. Marquita Parker, to come forward at this time. This is very important because during my father's illness, after he was released from the hospital here in Atlanta, we had to determine what rehab hospital to put him in. Of course, none of the children live here in Atlanta. And my dad was my mother caregiver. And so we had to figure out what we were going to do. My brother and his lovely wife stepped up to the plate and said, they're coming to Huntsville. They arranged a place and there my father was in the rehab hospital, but he never completed one night in rehab because he became ill so he was rushed to the emergency room and from that time on I know some of you had difficulties in finding him in the hospital he went through two surgeries colon surgeries he was in intensive care three times there was a time that they called us in the middle of the night and we it took us almost a half a day to find out where he was in the hospital but you know our God took care of him for over a hundred days. And I want you to know that his mind was sharp, but his body was just broken down. One day he told me, he said, whoa, come here. This is after uh, the doctors, he heard the doctors tell him his prognosis. After everything had quieted down, he said, whoa, come here. Y'all must think I'm about to look death in the face. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and that's where he was. That is exactly where he was. And he gave us hope. And he gave us inspiration. And my sister-in-law, being a physician, she just about had to tell the doctors there in the hospital what to do. She saved his life, in my opinion, over and over again. Yeah, yeah. So... As a small token of our love, here's something for the both of you because Mother Dear had to have somewhere to stay as well. So Mother Dear is in their home and we try to get there. Mother Dear, you're going to break me. I can't fly every week. I'm trying my best to get to see you, but I'm going to be there if I got to borrow from my churn. But anyway, I will be there to support my new Mother Dear and thank you so much, brother. <laughs> Love you.